My name is Safi Robinson and I'm the owner of Sister Woman Vegan, a plant-based soul food restaurant. I went vegan for a ridiculous reason. I basically, I was in South America and I tried guinea pig. It's a national dish there. It's called koi. It's kind of spit roasted with the teeth intact and with the eyelashes intact. And it was a traumatic experience for me. Um, I did not like it. <laughs> and I was, for, for some reason, the first time I'd ever really thought about, I was eating flesh, not meat. And that distinction kind of threw me a little bit. My name is Jinka. I am the founder of Fadji Sundays. So one of my friends, um, she had a few uh, fertility issues and she started looking into the woman's body, started looking into what we eat. Um, and one of the things was dairy and she basically made us realize how bad dairy is for, for you. Um, I had really bad acne before as well, so I started to cut out dairy. My name is Alicia Ayekon. I host a radio show called Alpha Beat. I'm very against the way that um, mass production has shaped the way that we consume food today. And so I just don't encourage that industry by just not taking part in it. My name is Safia Maria. I'm a plant-based chef. I've been cooking with food since I was super, super young, experimenting, always in the kitchen, making a mess. I remember sitting around my grandma's table, a full spread of food, mac and cheese, curry chicken, so much. And then I started realizing that it's very red meat, a lot of red meat and dairy. And I started thinking that everyone's just eating really for entertainment rather than for health. Um, so I started to ask myself, what can this food give me health-wise rather than pleasure? What is your earliest food memory? Definitely eating sugarcane at um, Notting Hill Carnival. Um, I grew up in Labrador Grove, so I'm born and raised um, in that area. And I just remember kind of sneaking away, being given a pound by my parents, and sneaking away and running and finding the juiciest bag of sugarcane. I was cooking chicken thighs. Seasoned them up and everything, and I tried to make, it was my first time making sweet potato mash, but I seasoned the sweet potato mash too much, so it got a bit too runny. So what I did, I thought, ah, oh, how can I put chicken and sweet potato together? So hear me up. <laughs> so what I did was I coated the chicken in the sweet potato, and then I fried it. So it was kind of like sweet potato fried chicken, and when I tell you it was the best, Thing ever. My mum bought me my first cookbook and you know, I opened my cookbook and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to make this chicken noodle soup for my mum. She came back home in the evening from work, it was cold, and I was like, mum, I'd made chicken noodle soup, and she was like, wow! Honestly, this meal was nasty. What is your go-to meal? An ital curry. Um, so ital means vital, it's in Rastafari culture. It's plant-based eating, um, no salt, no oil no meat, no dairy, no eggs. So it sounds like, what are you eating? <laughs> um, but it's full of like coconut milk, um, vegetables, um, you know, a nice bit of thyme and scotch bonnet, which I love. Um, and it's just quick and simple. You kind of put, put everything in the pot and let it bubble. Pesto gnocchi with garlic shiitake mushrooms. I love making gnocchi from scratch. I always used to be fascinated with the way it would pop to the top <laughs> of, of the uh, pot and um, spraying like the garlic and the herbs. It's the ultimate vegan comfort food. I'm a killer at making noodles. My brother says that I'm a noodle connoisseur. So yeah, I should probably get a little plaque. <laughs> what three ingredients would you take with you on a desert island? Coconut milk, thyme, fresh thyme, and garlic. Garlic, thyme, and scotch bonnet. Water, uh, salt, and lemon. Oh, yes, ginger, garlic, and chili. I feel, yeah, they would be my ones. Maybe a cheeky cinnamon. I'd hide that, I'd smuggle that in. <laughs> <laughs> What's your biggest cooking fail ever? Rice. And please don't judge me because <laughs> I know that that's like the most fundamental thing that you should be able to cook in the kitchen. But for some reason, like, I can't get it right. To cook it in the pan seems to be my arch nemesis. So I tried a cashew Earl Grey frosting, but it just didn't stick together right. So when it went on top of the cake, even though it was cool, it just started splitting and it didn't look nice. It just kind of looked like curdled milk. A pot like I had once with some of my friends at uni and um, I decided to bake, I didn't bake, 
I don't know why I decided to bake. I made three desserts and each one was worse than the last. When I was seven, um, my mum uh, gave birth to my little sister and she was in hospital. So it was just me and my brother at home. She said, okay, you're gonna make jollof rice today. And I said, how am I going to make jollof rice when you're not here? She said, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to do. I thought, whew. I am the biggest chef. I honestly felt like I was Gordon Ramsay in the kitchen. You know, my brother was sitting behind me. He was like, whoa, sis, you're doing really well. I was like, okay. I made the jollof rice and um, I remember my mum coming home saying, you know, this rice is delicious. It's the best she's tasted, um, but it really wasn't. The rice was burnt. I added too much salt, too much seasoning, but I'm really grateful because that is what has pushed me to want to become a chef, what pushed me to go into my auntie's house to learn how to cook. But if that day she had come home and said, this was disgusting, this is a, you know, this is an ep epic fail, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. Rice at home. Rice at home. Rice, Rice at, at home. home. Knife and fork. Knife and fork. Knife and fork. Ooh. <laughs> Um, hands? <laughs> oh, nah. Chicken with waffles, I guess, yeah. Chicken with waffles. Girl, I don't eat meat. So, nah. Fruit. Fruit, 100%. Fruit, sweet tooth. Vegetables. Home cooked. Oh, I don't want to say home cooked, but I do want to eat out, if you pay. Oh, uh, um. Home cooked. <coughs> rare, sorry. Rare. I would say rare. Well done. Nah. Definitely nah. <laughs> I know. Um, I have to try it. No. Who <laughs> made <laughs> that? <laughs> 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 that? Plantain with everything. <laughs> it goes with everything, everything. Even plantain ice cream, I'm sure, would taste nice. No, you can't have plantain with everything. You can't have plantain with your cereal. So, no. Sorry. Ooh. Depends on the dish. That's mad, then. Oh, dear. <laughs> ah. We have such power with um, what we consume, and veganism is just one way of kind of taking back that power and you know, helping both the environment and our own bodies and our own communities. I think specifically in the black community, um, we are uh, disproportionately affected by food, food um, injustices. And so I think just being more mindful at any, on any level um, is really important for us as black people. Do things that suit you, do things that are convenient for you. Everybody's situation is different, you know, don't pressure anyone to be a vegan, a meat eater, or a fish eater. Do what suits you, do what makes you feel comfortable, do what makes you feel happy. And I think that's the best way to live. Watch what you put in your body. Watch what you put in your body. Watch what you put in your body. Watch what you put in your body.